Carbon is at the centre of all life on Earth. It is part of the global carbon cycle, a term given to the processes where carbon exchanges between and resides within different reservoirs on Earth. This case study is about the provenance analysis of organic carbon, so looking at where carbon is coming from and where it's going in our Earth system. So when we look at these soils and these sediments around uh, in the environment, we want to see how these sediments are being transported from source, which is here, to sinks and lakes and oceans. Those reservoirs include the atmosphere, oceans, rocks, vegetation and soils. Let's have a closer look at how carbon is transferred from the terrestrial systems, vegetation, soils and rocks, to the ocean. First, what we call reduced or organic carbon, which is the atmospheric CO2 locked up in the form of organic matter, finds its way into soils through roots and plant litter. Soil is eroded by water and swept down rivers until it reaches the ocean. There, the reduced carbon is deposited for millions of years. Its journey to the ocean is described by the source-to-sink pathway. Source-to-sink means that we have organic carbon being fixated here in the source by photosynthesis, and then this carbon is then transported as organic carbon uh, along a source-to-sink transect, which form these rivers, and this ultimately leads to organic carbon being deposited in lakes in the ocean locking up carbon for millions of years. So what happens to the organic matter on its journey? What happens is that parts of the organic matter are continuously oxidized and CO2 is released back into the atmosphere. Only a small fraction of the organic matter produced by the biosphere is preserved long term in sediment. And how can radiocarbon help us learn something about these processes? Radiocarbon was also incorporated into the organic material from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. But unlike stable carbon, it decays along its journey where it is stored in different reservoirs and transported to its ultimate resting place in the sedimentary record. This decay allows us to identify the timescales over which the Earth's biochemical processes operate. Radiocarbon analysis can give key insights into the timescales and source-to-sink fate of organic matter in the Earth system. So radiocarbon is an amazing opportunity uh, for capturing how organic carbon is transferred from source to sink. It gives us a measure of time. Here in the atmosphere, we have modern atmospheric values for 14C. As this carbon propagates from the atmosphere into vegetation, into soils, into rivers and sedimentary sinks, this carbon is aging. The challenges that this poses is that we have a lot of uncertainty. So when we're looking at this environment, there's a lot of heterogeneity. How do we sample this environment to capture its, its complexity? Now, by sampling soils, rivers and oceans for radiocarbon analysis, we can trace the flow of atmospheric modern carbon into the biosphere, soils, fluvial sediments and then into the ocean. And by looking at specific molecules, we call them compounds, and their radiocarbon concentration, we can get a much more detailed picture. So in the environment, organic matter consists of many different kinds of compounds. Uh, these include things like lipids, uh, lignin, amino acids, and so on. And we want to, in order to capture this heterogeneity in, in the organic geochemistry of this environment, we need to look at individual compounds in order to understand the cycling and turnover on a molecular level. To sum up, the provenance analysis of organic carbon means tracing the processes in which carbon moves along a source-to-sink transect. The magnitude, efficiency and timescales of these carbon fluxes are key for understanding the controls on atmospheric chemistry over geologic timescales.